According to Pep Guardiola, Roberto De Zerbi is one of the most influential coaches in the Premier League history. We are talking about Brighton and their coach currently being in a very, very odd situation. First of all, they're currently ninth in the Premier League, as you can tell. And on top of it, just their recent last three games, they have lost all of them and seemingly are already out of European football with a 4-0 loss against AS Roma. And now, on top of all that, rumors are coming in from Liverpool that they are interested to sign the coach as a club replacement or also now from Bayern Munich that they could be interested in bringing in De Zerbi into their system as a replacement for Thomas Tuchel. So, Brighton, what is going on? How has this happened? How have you gone from a team that everyone kind of looked at and thought, wow, these guys are playing incredible football and they are just climbing up and climbing up the Premier League table to a team that currently is seemingly going down from where they used to be. Last season, sixth position, this season, ninth. And it's not like it's a big gap between it, but now they have 39 points. And that is 11 points away from fifth which is technically a spot that apparently could be getting Champions League football as well. It's not top four only anymore. So today I will be taking on Brighton and seeing what we can do with these incredible young talents that are still at this club and are potentially looking at losing one of the most influential managers of Premier League history. So let's start off by taking a look at the team, but not that one. Let's take a look at the team 10 years ago. In FIFA 14, freaking Lingard was part of Brighton, a 67 rated Lingard. Ujoa was up top, a midfield that isn't even above the 70 rating. Defenders with low ratings as well. Probably a couple of players that most people, including myself, don't even know. So Brighton, first of all, before I dive into this, I just want to say it's been so impressive to see what you have been pulling off in the past 15 years. It's admirable. But I still want to do this rebuild because I felt like it was still in an upwards trajectory and somehow things haven't really gone well now and it worries me to see what happens when Deserbi goes. So let's take a look at the players that have been outstanding for a team like Brighton. You might be saying Joao Pedro, you might be saying other names, but for me, Pascal Gross has been one of the most influential and best players in the Premier League for this team in the past couple of years. And he just doesn't get talked about enough in English media. Like, I don't hear anything about him. The things he does for this team, if you look at his stats, it's ridiculous. Now, moving on from him, we're looking obviously at players like Joao Pedro. These types of players are the ones that Brighton constantly keep bringing in into their squads. Young players that are good, but not that many people talk about them. And then they join Brighton and all of a sudden, everyone talks about them and wants to spend hundreds of millions on them. I say though, you know what happened to Liverpool and Chelsea. He ended up moving to Chelsea for over 100 million. And there is potential in the squad for players to get to that level too, so that Brighton can cash in. And that's a model that we might want to follow. Mitoma, obviously an extremely talented player that sadly has been injured for too long. Estupinian, the left back, has been linked with any team that looks for a world-class left back. You have Dunk holding it down at the back. You have Februggen, the uh, Dutch national goalkeeper now. He has secured that spot for the Euros, it seems like. So congratulations to this young goalkeeper who I talked about last year already when he was at Anderlecht. This kid is special. And yeah, Van Hecke also showing up performances that I personally didn't expect. Another name that turns out to be incredible in a team like Brighton. So... Let's see what we can pull off with this team. How fast can we get to the top of Premier League football and get involved in European competitions? The rebuild starts now. Also, I want to know from you guys in the comments down below, who is like the oldest player you can remember signing into your career mode? For me, the oldest one I can remember is this man, Alexander Sergeyevich Kozlov. Yes, for whatever reason, he turned out to be an absolute monster in, I believe, my Wolves career mode back in FIFA 13. So let me know which one is the earliest. I shouldn't say oldest. The earliest player you can remember signing 
on your career mode in the comments down below. We also need to take a look into the players that are currently loaned out by Brighton. Dahoud Denizundav, who is doing exceptional at Stuttgart right now, probably will be picked up for a decent amount of money for any uh, from any Bundesliga team there, possibly Stuttgart, obviously. Uh, then you also have a bunch of youngsters that are out on loan, as you can see right here. And I added a couple ones on top of it. Let's take a look at the transfer hub here and you will realize that Enciso, Inchewood, Bononote and also Baleba have been sent out on loan to give these players time somewhere else where hopefully they can grow and be good enough for our team. And I also just accepted a transfer offer for Solly March. My first official signing for the Brighton squad is a player that they probably need. I'm looking at the right backs in the Brighton squad and I'm seeing Lamptey, who at one point was one of the brightest talents in the Premier League, but hasn't really gotten to that level that people expected him to get to. And then I'm looking at Feltman, who also hasn't really... Uh, brought the, the quality of like an Estupinian on the other side, you know, he's doing incredible things. The right hand side of Brighton just seems a bit underwhelming. So for that reason, I am going for Yukinari Sugabara. This guy surely has to get a transfer in this upcoming summer. I feel like his talents are being wasted at Azad Alkmaar, a team in the Eredivisie VC that aren't necessarily doing exceptionally well. They're not up there competing for the title. He has recently been called up to the Japanese national team as well. He can take set pieces. He can go ahead and move forward the, with the ball and create for the team. He is up there in terms of, like, if you look at his stats, he's up there for fullbacks with offensive involvements, creating chances, passing the ball forward. You know, all that progressive stuff that coaches nowadays look into. Sugabara has all of that in him, and it would be such a typical signing. Just like Mitoma, who back in the day joined from, I believe, Union saint gilois He is like the perfect counterpart on the right-hand side. This would work so well. And of course, Sugabara and Mitoma could become friends. Best friends forever and ever. Edon Zegrova. Guys, please remember the name. This is the player I am bringing in into the Brighton squad because I genuinely believe this guy could become a fan favorite at any squad. Now, this is someone I watched at Lille last season or even the season before that. He was like at times on the bench, sometimes starting. And every time he came on, I thought, wow, this guy has something about him. And just recently, he has been crushing it for Lille. In the past six months, I think he has five goals and six assists. But the most important thing about this player is the fact that he loves to dribble past people. He loves to make defenders look silly. That's the type of player people just love to watch. So Edon Zegrova, the man from Kosovo, left-footed, 24 years old, is the man to take the right side of this team to the next level. Zegrova and Sugavara. That, my friends, is an upgrade to this Brighton squad. Well, the first season is done and it's quite shocking. 51 points on Brighton. Is that a position that you guys think Brighton could end up in at the end of the season? I, I don't think it's going to happen. Surely they're going to stay in the top 10. But right now in real life, they're in the ninth position and I finished off not too far from it. Once again, just stats wise because you obviously have certain rankings for players in other teams and also our team, you're probably looking at it and thinking, okay, this is this is where the team should be. And that's just, once again, showcasing how well this Zerbi has done in the past, getting this team to the spot that they're in. So props to him. But with him gone, we need to rebuild this team and also set ourselves new goals. Now, mid-table for our first season is fine. We have Arsenal at the top with 81 points. They're winning it right there. And here it is. Our team is growing. That's the good thing about this side. You have so many young players. Evan Ferguson, who's obviously outstanding. 79 rated now alongside Joao Pedro. Turned into a center attack in midfielder. That is fine too. Zegrova gone up to an 81. Pascal Gross on an 81 as well, but he's 32 years old. So we got to think about him. We also have to think about Dunk, who's 32 years old. Those are the only older ones in the team, but happily we'll be replacing those guys moving forward. But still very thankful for what they have done for this team in the past and especially in real life. But here is Joao Pedro with 22 and 6. 
Ferguson, zero assists, 19 goals. And then we have Mitoma with 22 goal contributions. Pascal Gross once again kicking in with some good numbers as well. Zegrova, first season, 10 goal contributions in the Premier League. That's not awful. Well, sadly, Pascal Gross was going down in his stats and moved on now. And I thought, you know what? A German midfielder that is very good technically and also can take set pieces has just left the team. How about we bring in exactly the same profile back into the team? And we are going to the team that we had two players loaned out to. It is VfB Stuttgart's Angelo Stiller. At first, he was on the bench at Hoffenheim. On that picture right there, he still has the Hoffenheim shirt on. But at Stuttgart, he has been unbelievable. Honestly, I am so excited about this talent in terms of Germany. And he's going to come into our team right now and rock that center midfield position for us. He's very good defensively, but also moving forward, his passing play, his crosses, all those things. He is very good at that. So this could be the next Pascal Gross for Brighton. I think this is one of the, if not the most perfect transfer I've ever made on any rebuild. I'm kind of a big deal. Lewis Dunk also started to go down this stats and I thought, you know what? Let's bring in an experienced center back just like Dunk. And this is a player that is rocking it in Germany right now. When everyone speaks about Bayer Leverkusen, they speak about Grimaldo, they speak about Flim Pong, Florian Wirtz, Palacios, all those players, Boniface. Many people don't talk about Jonathan Ta, but luckily for him, the Germany national team coach Julian Nagelsmann is considering taking him alongside him to the Euros. And he has been very good. There was a time where Jonathan Ta was looked at as a defender that not many teams, especially top teams, would look at to bring into their team. But this last season, he has been exceptional. And I want to show him respect. I want to make him the more experienced centre-back in this centre-back pairing right now. Van Heck and Igor are going to battle it out for that other centre-back position. Igor being left-footed, he can go on to that left-hand side. But... This could be a very, very interesting partnership for us that hopefully propels our team higher up the league table. The team has improved to ninth. <laughs> it's our top 10 and we got that one locked down. Yes, amazing improvements. I am clearly the best coach in the world. Lads, we are looking at that ninth position and understanding that it is progress, but it isn't enough. I mean, freaking Everton is ahead of us. That is something I don't want to see anymore. And it only being our second season, it's okay. But my job is not, a good, not in a good spot now. So let's take a look at the team and realize that ratings-wise, things are looking very good in certain positions. Our striker, our cam, our left midfielder, our right midfielder, our defender. Like, we have so many players on really decent ratings. We just need to do better. And I just realized... I think I forgot about the team strategy. I think I did. And that is a big, big problem. I should be signing the best coaches. I have so many three-star coaches in here that I need to exchange to higher rated coaches. But let me show you something. Oh yeah, you saw it right there. Our team, despite coming in ninth, won the cup, the FA Cup against Arsenal in the final 3-1 which means we are actually going to Europe. So that is huge. And now let me show you something else. Let's go into the stats and see if one of our players is ridiculously good. And yes, he is. Evan Ferguson gone up by plus seven, scoring 31 goals and getting five assists. He is on fire. And Joao Pedro is just trying to keep up. He has 35 goal contributions. These two will lead us to success I'm 100% sure of it. As much as I like Billy Gilmore, I need an upgrade for the CDM position. And I'm going for someone who just like Stiller can take set pieces, can move the ball forward, can defend, can do everything that is necessary for that position. It's Pepe Lu, the former Levante player who has joined Valencia and has looked great in a side that, personally speaking, doesn't play that great football at the moment. He is going straight into our team with an 83 rating. I needed that upgrade in midfield, and I also believe he can still go up in his rating. He's not a youngster. He's 26 years old at this stage as he joins us. So I'm pretty happy with the combination of these two right now in our team. I think I could make more transfers. I probably could. 
but I really want to trust the team. I want this team to be the one that plays in Europe, so let's give it a try. Season's over. The boys seem to have done really well, but I didn't see a Europa League final in there. What happened? We lost against Juventus. Okay, I mean, that's justified, but have we managed to... Yes. Yes, we have. I was wondering if we got ourselves European football again, and the boys did it. Brighton on 77 points. The same amount as Arsenal. Yes, we have a much different goal difference. That is clear to me, but that is something we can work on as we are continuously improving the team step by step while also keeping the identity of Brighton. Ferguson and Joao Pedro up top looking extremely solid. Mitoma catching those guys in terms of rating. He's 29 years old though. The right midfield positions, Jegrova, he's on fire. He's getting to those 87s, 88s very soon. Yeah, Pepe Lu looking solid. Stilla a little bit behind Pepe Lu, but I think he was actually behind him anyways in terms of rating. Now, centre-back wise, Igor, 28 years old, 84 rated. Jonathan Ta, 30 years old now, 87 rated. Great to have him as part of this team, bringing in experience. He probably can play another two good seasons for us. And by the way, we have so many players as backups as well. This is the beauty of managing a team like Brighton. You just have so many backup players. And I also have others that are still out on loan. Yes, a bunch of them are still out on loan. Goals-wise, Ferguson, 33-2. Joao Pedro, 25-8. Jegroba, 15-8. Really good stuff. And growth-wise, in terms of rating, if we look at players loaned out, Arco, 79 rated right, right now. Baleba, 76. Moran, 74. Beetle, the young goalkeeper on a 74 as well so lots of talents to come through and fill up the bench even more as we get champions league footing so i was looking at my center back pairing and i thought i need to bring in a little bit more competition and i am bringing in a player that truly has the ability to possibly be world class we are talking about gonzalo inacio currently under ruben amorim who also is a great coach that has been linked to Liverpool and also Bayern Munich already. He is doing a great job. And uh, yeah, if he moves to Liverpool, for example, the coach, this guy could come along with him, which I wouldn't mind. But enough about Liverpool. Let's talk about the fact that Igor now has competition with the new man coming in. Inacio is currently out on internationals. That's fine. We now have competition in there and he could be taken over from Igor any time. So with that, this season, it's a go. Okay, Manchester City, you win. They have won the FA Cup, and it's sad to see. But lads, we won the Premier League. You can have the FA Cup. We don't care here at Brighton. For the first time, we have become Premier League champions, and that is already an incredible feeling. But we are not done yet. When we look at the Champions League, Obviously, we didn't make it to the finals at the moment. If we go further down, you can see City kicked us out of the Champions League as well. So two cup competitions have been prevented by Manchester City. So that's fine because this team is going to go after it again next season. And this team now is world class. Inacio has won the battle against Igor. Igor gone up to an 85, but that's not enough. Inacio up to an 87. And now we have a team that truly is incredible with wingers who can dribble past anyone, with a center attacking midfielder that can create chances or finish them by himself, with a tall, strong, physical striker up top, with two CDMs or midfielders, I should say, who have the ability to create something out of nothing. And yeah, this team deserves to be up there next season. We have to get there. Otherwise, we will have to make changes. Ferguson with 40 goal contributions. Mitoma having his best season with 35. We have Jay Groba coming in with 25. Joao Pedro with 26. You can see how well the team is performing. We just need that final perfect season. Well, do I have something to show you if you get past Juve? Yes, we do. Okay. So this season is on. We could potentially get there if we get past Liverpool, which we do. Okay, we did it. We are in the Champions League final. I want to show you something. We are up against Manchester City. Yes, yes, this is it. I wanted that. That's perfect. Because if we go into the standings here, actually, if we go into the calendar, that's where I can show you the best. 
if we go halfway through here in January, we kicked Manchester City out of the cup. So the place where they took away the title from us, they are now out of it, out of it thanks to us. And if we go down further, we did beat by Leverkusen and then the rest you saw, right? But going into the Premier League, a, a league that we have won, it's not that important, right? Yeah, we got second place with the same amount of points as Manchester City. It doesn't matter. Community Shield, yes, they won it. But again, we do not care. FA Cup has been won by, um, of course, the likes of Everton. And then in the Carabao Cup, you can see Brighton winning it, which means we already have one trophy in the bag. The team that has done it is the same that you saw last year, just with a couple of improvements. Very, very slight improvements on some of our players. But I think the biggest difference in the team has been the rise of Februggen lately. So that was the position where I was a bit worried. I thought maybe I have to bring in a new goalkeeper, but the Dutchman has been doing well and uh, flying in between those two goalposts. And we see Joao Pedro, 24 and 16. He has been the main man, and I cannot wait to see what he can pull off here. Evan Ferguson with the 23 and 4. Jagrova, Stela, all these guys doing well. Mitoma picked up an injury, but don't worry. I have that secret ingredient at my physio's department. He will go ahead and get things done for us. Mitoma will be there for that Champions League final against Manchester City and City I assume have an insane a ridiculous team Haaland, Foden, Rodrigo, Gio Reyna, Doyle okay Harvard Ellis is back Livramento and Balde in the fullback positions and Ederson in goal that attack scares me Gio Reyna confuses me Doyle I don't even know what to say lads I'm ready. Oh, Man City, you did take away a trophy from us or two, but now it's time to hurt you where it hurts the most. The Champions League final. The Zerbi is gone, but we still managed to keep a lot of the original players going. And on top of it, we added in some players that I truly believe are class, especially Zegrova. You guys need to watch that man play. There should be like YouTube highlights somewhere. If you have gone ahead and checked it out, please let me know in the comments down below what you think of him. That's a pass from João Pedro into Ferguson. Does he have a power shot? Yes, he does well, but Ederson does better. Solid tackle. Straight away, Sugavara gets the ball. And off we go to the left with Estupinian and Mitoma in position. Angelo Stiller fighting off Rodri. That is quite impressive at the far post. Jagrova asks for it, gets it, and then it lands in front of Joao Pedro. Ederson drops it right at his feet, and from that close, he could have scored it with his eyes closed, lads. This is it. Jagrova gets the first big chance started. Of course, it is Pepe Lu or Stila's cross, and uh, yeah, Ederson, buddy, you are failing on that one, aren't you? Uh oh that ain't it. That ain't it. Haaland. We step in with Jonathan Ta. Yes, played against him in the Bundesliga. I'd be surprised if he had a good record against him, to be honest. And there goes Haaland again. What? You're not... You're not giving the penalty there, ref. We need to talk. Estupinian is right there. Haaland shoots. And he tackles him. Why? Why do you tackle him? I didn't press anything. Okay. Haaland always scores against me. I can't remember the first, like, I never saved a Haaland penalty. I did it now. I did it now. Bart Verbruggen, you Dutch legend. There we go. Ta steps in. Man, he has been incredible today. And I see the run off Stilla. Lovely turn. Even better pass into Sugavara. Sugavara. Oh, come on. I should have played it into Zegrova right next to him. Haaland taking freaking free kicks from that far out that's interesting ferguson ah that would have been something if he could have gotten past him instead now it's a very premature shot from phil foden he should have easily gone ahead and scored there by just running a bit further Zegrova, here we go down the wing he will stop he will get past you pal oh yes he will he will dribble and continue doing exactly what he does best that is football, my friends. Yes! Angelo Stiller bangs it into the top left corner. And who started it? 
Jegrova. Yes. <laughs> what a finish by Stiller, by the way. Let's take another look at that beautiful, beautiful shot. Shout out to Pepe Lu for the assist as well. Yeah, that, that is a nice one. Top left, no chance at all for Ederson. Nah, you're not getting that. Why the hell is Haaland taking their free kicks? That will never make sense to me. Anyways, Evan Ferguson. No, it's Jegrova. He's through again. He's running. He's taking on Ederson and I am... Very, very stupid. I am so sorry for not just scoring a simple goal there. <laughs> oh my god. No way, Mitoma just ruined that man's career. <laughs> Lads, this is too much fun. I'm enjoying myself. I mean, are you guys catching yourselves really enjoying the gameplay part as well? I really, really do, man. Sometimes, certain games, I'm feeling myself, and this is one of those. That is a class goal for Mitoma. The man has studied dribbling. I'm not surprised. Oh, Haaland sending me to the shops right here. Inacio just not, does not possess the pace. But we do have Fabrugan, and that's not enough. <laughs> we concede 3-1, clean sheets gone. Stiller, yes, nice, nice. Draw Pedro, oh, the movement. Shugavara, redeem yourself. Yes, it's done. Give me the trophy right now. This is finished. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I pressed the button to skip the celebrations i am so sorry i hope you can still see something here we have won the game 4-1 please give me celebrations is there oh mate i wish you could replay them how dare i ruin it that might be the first time i've actually done that this year i was so happy about my streak of not ruining it but you can see the boys celebrating right here guys thank you so much for watching even though I might have ruined the biggest moment. But who cares? We ruined Manchester City's dreams. And that's all I cared about right here. Thank you for watching. Brighton has been a joy. I'm excited to see what happens with them once Desiree possibly leaves. Take care, guys. And peace.